Um, I was going to kick off on this point with my own though, which is we cannot solve our problems using the thinking we use when we create them. <laughs> and actually, this is what we face now. If we look at what's been happening, what we see is that the neoliberal capitalists are trying to repair the machine that's causing the problem. And what we have to do is go, no, we don't need that machine. We want another one. Hey! If you go back and just look at what sort of initiated it, first of all we had the bankers that were essentially selling subprime mortgages. Now the clue here is in the, in the name, subprime. There's the clue, not the best, a little bit dodgy. They could have called it shit club, but they thought none of them were the best <laughs> Okay, that's the clue. Now, if you ask the banker, what are you doing? They say, well, we're doing something very clever. No, what exactly is it? Well, we're selling loans to people who can't pay them back. They could only get away with it by securitization, which was the part that was important, where they bundled up loans and sold them on as financial products, and the way that they could actually do that, you know, they were bunching up to the right, good properties, maybe a bit of bunching up palace, maybe the Queen Mum lost something on the TV, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and you put it in with a little bit of a shit property, and maybe a twig and some yoga, and you sell it all. <laughs> because, you know, all that money is swimming around the system because we've actually been financialized. That's what happened. We became financialized. People's houses, they built, they stopped building council houses effectively. Right? This is why people are being forced onto a housing market, into a private housing market. They built 300 council houses last year. There are 444 councils. We couldn't even build a whole council house in each council. It's like we PFI'd and subcontracted the thing out to fucking Kinder Egg or something. Hey! And they couldn't quite get it together. Now this is madness. This is utter madness that people are then forced onto the private box market. People's pensions then get suddenly shoved off and you've got to get a private pension plan. People's students have to pay for their education, you have to borrow money. I'm going to wait for the price. If you want to build schools or universities or hospitals, now you have to put it out to PFI contracts. So we're privatizing all of that, and that money goes swimming around, having to find a home, having to find a 10% increase, and what you have to do is therefore the hedge funds are out there taking that money into leverage up, and essentially have fucked it all up. Now, at this point, what should happen, when, when the bankers went to Gordon Brown and said, look, we're very sorry, but we've broken everything, <laughs> and Gordon Brown, well, what are you going to do? Well, we'd like some more money. Okay, you won't do it again. No, we won't. <laughs> At this point, we should have just stepped back and go, hang on a minute. We're using the same thinking that we used when we created the problem. Actually, what we need to be looking at is how we create alternatives. We need to be asking. We've had what we've essentially seen over the past 30 years is the state has withdrawn from the public areas of our lives and entered the private areas of our lives. So in housing, in pensions, in job security, in building local amenities and communities, it's withdrawn and pushed it onto the private sector. But as far as, you know, everything else they want to find out about, you know, ID cards and, uh, 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 you know, stock and search and all this kind of stuff isn't entering into our private life. What we need to see is the reverse of that. We need to see that idea reversed. So we claim the public areas and claim them as ours. So that utilities are utilities that are run for our benefit and not for the benefit of the rich. Does water take any better since it was privatised? Is it cheaper since it was privatised? Do the trains get any better since they were privatised? No, they're ours. We need to take them back. Thank you. 
banking regulations. Or, there's lots of myths and there's lots of misinformation. The misinformation and myths, for a start, when, you know, people put it around that we've nationalised the banks. We haven't nationalised the banks. We've subsidised the banks. We've given them free money. We haven't nationalised them because we're not in control of them. If we nationalised them, we'd be in there at the weekend, photocopying our last phone or whatever. <laughs> it would be ours to play with. We need to nationalise the banks. That's what we need to do. We need to take them over. We've paid for them. They're ours. This is a matter of consumer affairs, I think you'll find. <laughs> so what we need to do once we've got hold of the banks is we can then start to direct social policy. Royal Bank of Scotland's got 16 billion quid's worth of investment in fossil fuels. We can shut that down. We can shut down 16 billion quid worth of carbon. We can shut that down. The Royal Bank of we can break this stuff down and go back to the idea that banking and finance was actually about communities where we would lend money or put money into a credit union or a building society and our friends and our neighbours would be able to borrow that cash and we'd all be linked together as a community. Woo! Now what we also need to do is, is I need to just to tell you about the, the messages that will come out about the G20 is they will start saying that they're going to act on tax papers. They're not. They're going to get a few bits of paper that say, when you ask for some information about an individual, we might give it to you. <coughs> We've got to shut them down. We've got to shut down the tax havens. Because we, the Tax Justice Network estimates that we lose in this country approximately £100 billion pounds a year in corporate tax evasion and avoidance. A hundred billion. And then they have the audacity to publish one of those fucking adverts that says we're closing in, we know where you live, you're cheating on the best of it. We should be we should be putting the DSS onto the bankers. They get they would get <laughs> and in tax avoidance was amassing about a hundred billion a year. We need to shut these down. We need, I, I tell you, this is how absurd it has got. PFI contracts, the obsession with the market has led to the fact that now if you walk down Whitehall, those government buildings aren't owned by the government, they're not owned by the public. Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs is actually owned by Maitley, a company called Maitley, who are based your time is <laughs> Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs actually have to lease their offices from a company called Maitley, who are based in Jersey. So the tax system rents its offices from tax dodgers. <laughs> The Treasury had their building owned by Barclays Private Equity. It's so the tax system, once again, we're paying for tax dodgers. If you look at uh, a, a place like the Home Office, the Home Office is owned by HSB Infrastructure based in Guernsey. We're paying tax money to tax dodgers. Stoke Mandeville Hospital belongs in Guernsey. The Metropolitan Police Training Centre belongs in Guernsey. All this money is going offshore. And we have to stop it. It got to the point where actually the MOD, we had a demo outside the MOD recently, because the MOD is, based, is actually owned uh, by Henderson, who are based in Jersey. So the MOD rents their office from tax dodgers. And we had a big demo, well, a little demo actually, I'll call it big because no one can check. But it was a big demo. <laughs> Huge, of thousands of us. And we had big banners demanding that the armed forces of this country do something sensible, namely invade Jersey and get the title deeds back. <laughs> Number one, it's on the way back from Iraq. <laughs> Number two, the island is the used to occupation and they haven't proved troublesome in the past. <laughs> Number three, there are no American troops involved, so casualties should be light. <laughs> so the point being is, we have privatised and we have securitised 
and financialise our lives and the institutions that should be binding us together. And now, when the market has fallen, they come back to us for the bailout. It's not there any longer. The deal is this. You fucked it. You broke it. You want us to mend it. We're going to have it. The other thing that they're going to be talking about on, on the G20 is they will start to talk about aid for developing countries. And when they talk about aid, they don't mean money just gets given. They talk about loans. So once again, they're using the thinking that got us in the problem in the first place. They're looking at pumping billions of dollars into developing world countries who are in incredible crisis because of this recession. But it's not A, it's a loan. The IMF, which is the very institution which has caused such destitution in developing world, is going to be the instrument through which they put this money, through which they loan this money. If you go back to 1997, Indonesia was in crisis, and the economic crisis, the Asian economic crisis, the IMF stepped in, and the IMF put conditions on the loan, and the conditions were low interest rates and you cut public spending. The, the effect was 10 million Indonesians were unemployed because of an IMF loan. We have to say, we will not tolerate the, the absolute destruction a decimation of societies in developing world countries to shoot your stupid innate failure.